In 2004, a collaboration between Australian and Indonesian researchers brought to light the findings of ancient fossils and rudimentary stone tools reminiscent of the older one style from the Liang Bua cave, aptly named for its cool interior, situated on the secluded island of Flores in Indonesia. These discoveries encompassed a diminutive hominin species, christened Homo floresiensis, and people have started to refer to them as the hobbit. Using the term hobbit to describe Homo floresiensis trivializes their existence and reduces them to fictional characters. It's important to afford ancient species the same dignity and respect we would wish for our own ancestors by using scientifically accurate terms we honor their place as being a part of genus Homo. The discovery of Homo floresiensis was made in Indonesia, and the use of a Western literary term might not resonate or be respectful to the local culture and its own interpretations and names for the species. Referring to ancient human species with diminutive or fictional names can reflect an anthropocentric view, implying that any deviation from modern Homo sapiens norms is other or lesser. With this point, of how I strongly disagree with calling them hobbits, let's learn more about this species of genus Homo. The exact placement of Homo floresiensis within human history remains a topic of debate. Since their initial discovery in 2004, the fossils of Homo floresiensis have sparked a continuous debate among scholars. Remarkably, the fossils of Homo floresiensis are distinguished by their relatively recent geological age, dated between 74,000 to 17,000 years ago, a time frame that overlaps with the existence of modern humans across much of the old world and possibly even into the new world. Despite this, evidence of modern human presence at Liang Bua is only found in the sediment layers that are more recent than those containing the Homo floresiensis fossils. The LB1 skeleton, recognized as the type specimen for Homo floresiensis, is notable for its almost intact skull, a segment of the pelvis, several bones from the limbs and bones from the hands and feet. This particular individual was approximately 1.06 meters or about 3 feet 6 inches tall, mirroring the stature of a modern human child aged between 3 to 4 years. To this day, LB1's skull is the sole complete cranium unearthed, though a second jawbone and numerous skeletal fragments from another individual, identified as LB6, have also been detailed. Additionally, the discovery of fossils from at least four more individuals validates the existence of a community of similarly small-statured beings, indicating that LB1's diminutive size was not an isolated occurrence. The initial analyses highlighted a blend of primitive traits, unchanged from earlier species and evolved features connecting them to later ones. The cranial structure of LB1 mirrors that of extinct Homo genus members. However, the skeletal structure presents a more archaic form, aligning LB1 and other Flores fossils with ancient species such as Australopithecus afarensis, the group to which Lucy belongs. This presents a conundrum. A community living between 74,000 and 18,000 years ago, with cranial features akin to much older species like Homo habilis or Homo erectus, and a skeletal makeup sharing traits with Australopith species from at least three million years ago. It's believed that Homo floresiensis crafted the simple, older one like stone tools found alongside the skeletal remains in the Liangbua cave. These implements are similar to others discovered across the island, dating back nearly a million years. Evidence, such as cut marks on stegodon bones, suggests these hominins engaged in butchering activities. Additionally, the presence of charred bones and stones raises questions about whether Homo floresiensis used fire deliberately or accidentally. Given the archaic physical structure yet unexpectedly recent geological dating of the fossils, numerous theories have been proposed to account for the presence of Homo floresiensis on Flores. Homo erectus is known to have inhabited Southeast Asia from around 1.5 million years ago, possibly persisting until 50,000 years ago. The distinct features of the LB1 skull, such as its low brain case with a receding forehead, robust skull bones, and a compact, flat face among other characteristics alongside the brain's shape, provide links to Homo erectus. However, the smaller stature and brain volume of Homo floresiensis fall outside the typical range observed for Homo erectus. 
Consequently, the initial hypothesis posited that Homo floresiensis represented a new species, a diminutive descendant of Homo erectus based mainly on cranial evidence. Further anatomical comparisons also align with Homo erectus, such as in brain and shoulder structure. This theory suggests that the ancestors of Homo floresiensis navigated the perilous seas to Flores, leading to a gradual diminution in size over time. Island dwarfism, a phenomenon observed in several large mammals including primates, mammoths, and deer, as well as in human populations, particularly in Southeast Asian islands, could explain this size reduction. This process is often attributed to limited resource availability, where smaller body size becomes more advantageous in island environments than on larger land masses. Flores is located in Wallacea, a region characterized by minimal migration from adjacent Asian and Australasian faunas, largely due to strong ocean currents that isolate these islands even during periods of low sea levels. Alongside Homo floresiensis, a few other large mammals, such as Stegodon and Komodo dragons, have been found in this region, with their scarcity underscoring the challenges large terrestrial animals face in reaching these islands. Notably, the Stegodon species discovered alongside Homo floresiensis fossils, Stegodon florensis insularis, is a dwarfed form, indicating a similar process affecting both species. However, the argument against island dwarfism as an explanation for Homo floresiensis centers on the disproportionate reduction in brain size relative to body size. LB1's brain volume, estimated at 417 cubic centimeters from CT scans, is roughly a third of the average modern human brain size, a disparity difficult to reconcile with typical island dwarfism patterns, assuming an ancestor similar to modern humans or even Homo erectus. While brain size usually reduces less significantly than body size, more pronounced decreases in brain size relative to body size have been documented in a few cases, such as Myotragus or cave goat on Mallorca and Hippopotamus lemuli on Madagascar, suggesting that such drastic changes, although rare, are possible. A second hypothesis posits that the hominin fossils found on Flores during the Pleistocene were descendants of a more archaic hominin lineage than Homo erectus, characterized by smaller body and brain sizes. This theory is bolstered by evidence from the jawbone and overall skeletal structure. The dental and jaw morphology closely aligns with that of Australopithecus and the earliest Homo species, rather than Homo erectus. Notably, the disproportionately short legs, when compared both to the arms and to the feet, mirror patterns observed in apes and Australopithecines, rather than Homo erectus. An absence of a comparable skeletal framework for Homo habilis makes direct comparisons challenging. LB1 exhibited a weight-to-height ratio that closely resembles that of Lucy, the well-known Australopithecus afarensis fossil, despite LB1's modest height of 106 centimeters, suggesting a weight of approximately 32.5 kilograms or 71.7 pounds. The wrist bones of Homo floresiensis are more similar to those of chimpanzees than of modern humans or Neanderthals, indicating a more primitive wrist morphology not well documented in early Homo species like Homo habilis and Homo erectus. Similarly, the foot structure, while showing some human-like characteristics, retains several primitive aspects, including a long forefoot with curved toes and an absence of the medial longitudinal arch, indicative of a unique walking gait. This skeletal trait combination suggests that the lineage of Homo floresiensis may predate Homo erectus. However, this theory faces significant challenges, chiefly the absence of any pre-Homo erectus hominin fossils in Southeast Asia, with such records primarily found in Africa. Additionally, the skeletal record of pre-erectus Homo species is sparse, complicating direct comparisons with Homo floresiensis. Consequently, it's uncertain whether a species like Homo habilis, which predates Homo erectus in the geological timeline, would serve as a suitable ancestral model for Homo floresiensis. Contrasting these evolutionary theories is a third proposal suggesting that the Flores fossils represent modern humans afflicted with a pathological condition, initially posited as microcephaly, where the brain and skull are significantly smaller than normal. Microcephaly, resulting from genetic disorders, leads to underdeveloped brains and skulls. 
Yet this hypothesis has struggled to identify a specific disorder that could account for the wide array of primitive traits observed in the LB1 skeleton. Despite superficial similarities in skull shape between humans with microcephaly and archaic homo species, closer examination of cranial and brain morphology reveals that LB1 shares definitive features with ancient homo species, arguing against the pathology hypothesis. Beyond microcephaly, two distinct medical conditions have been suggested as possible. Explanations for the characteristics observed in Homo floresiensis. Mixoedematous endemic hypothyroidism, commonly known as cretinism, and Laron syndrome. Mixoedematous endemic hypothyroidism results from iodine deficiency during pre- and postnatal development. Iodine is essential for thyroid hormone production and central nervous system development. Prominent symptoms of this condition include intellectual disability, neurological impairments, and short stature due to delayed bone maturation. Although Cretans often have a broad, short skull, brachycephalic, and unfused cranial sutures even after brain growth ceases, the LB1 skull does not exhibit brachycephaly and its cranial sutures are fully fused. Laron syndrome is marked by a resistance to growth hormones where the body produces adequate growth hormones, but receptors fail to respond appropriately. Similar to mixoedematous hypothyroidism, Laron syndrome patients are notably shorter. Initial comparisons suggested parallels between LB1 and individuals with Laron syndrome. However, further analysis has debunked this assertion, demonstrating no substantial evidence linking LB1 to Laron syndrome. The unique assemblage of Homo floresiensis characteristics, short stature, reduced brain size, archaic skeletal structure, and the use of simple stone tools, all during a period when fully modern humans occupied other regions of the world has sparked a broad spectrum of interpretations. The scientific community has yet to reach a consensus on the nature of the Liang Bua fossils as research continues and differing analyses emerge. Making sense of these findings involves acknowledging that while conditions such as cretinism and Laron syndrome align with the small body size observed in LB1, they fail to account for the absence of other disease-related symptoms in the LB1 skeleton. Additionally, the discovery of similarly small individuals within the Liangbua cave suggests that short stature was a population trait rather than an anomaly in a diseased individual. The microcephaly argument is harder to refute as it represents a symptom rather than a specific disease, yet the neurocranial shape of LB1 differs from that of known human microcephalics, and no single disorder has been identified that explains the primitive features observed across the skeleton. Consequently, the evidence largely contradicts a disease-based explanation for the traits of LB1 and her contemporaries in Liangbua Cave. Instead, the evidence collectively suggests a complex narrative. The prevailing theories propose that Homo floresiensis either evolved from a dwarfed Homo erectus or descended from a more archaic hominin species. Should the former hypothesis hold, it would imply that certain skeletal features, reminiscent of earlier Australopith species and thought to be lost before or at the emergence of Homo erectus, re-emerged in the Homo floresiensis lineage. Conversely, if the latter hypothesis is accurate, then Homo floresiensis might have originated from a species akin to Homo habilis, for which there is currently no evidence in Asia. The true evolutionary history of the Flores Island awaits clarification through the discovery of additional fossils or further analytical research.